So for the lab this week, you were dealing with genetics problems, um, and I want to go through just a couple of those example problems that were on your lab report. So the first one, we we're dealing with two different phenotypes, yellow phenotype and blue phenotype. And the dominant phenotype is yellow, so it's represented by the capital letter, and the recessive one is blue. So it asked you to set up and complete Punnett squares for the following crosses. So the first cross they're asking you to complete is a homozygous dominant crossed with a heterozygous individual. So let's work that out. So we're going to have, this is a one trait cross. So we'll have a four box Punnett square. And we'll put this parent here. So there's the gametes that that parent can generate. We'll put the other parent here. That parent can generate these two gametes. Because remember, a gamete is only half of the genetic material. So then we just fill in our Punnett square. This one carries across. This one carries down. And that is the result of that particular cross. Now the next example cross they want us to use is again, we have one homozygous dominant individual, but this time we're crossing with a homozygous recessive individual. So we have these gametes that can be produced by these two parents. And we'll see for this particular cross, all of the offspring are going to have the same genotype. So 100% of these, or 100% of the F1 generation are big Y, little y. That's their genotype. Phenotypically, because they all have one dominant allele, they're all going to be yellow. So here, every single one of these offspring has at least one dominant allele, so all of these will be yellow. So that was one of your questions. What are the re resulting phenotypes? Well, for both crosses, they're all yellow. Are there any blue kernels? No. We know the only way to have a blue kernel is to be the homozygous recessive, and we don't have any offspring with that particular genotype. Um, so we could take that a step further, and we could say, well, what if we cross two of the individuals from the F1 generation from this cross? So the F1, meaning if this is a parent and this is a parent, all of the possible offspring inside this would represent the F1 or the first filial generation. So we could cross two of the F1 generation, and if we do that, the result from that cross then will be the F2 generation. So we can set this up, put this parent across the top, there's the gametes for that parent, the other parent down the side, and what's inside of this Punnett square then is going to be the F2 generation. So the F2 generation, the genotypes are one big Y, big Y, to two big Y, little Y, to one little Y, little Y. That's the genotypic ratio. Now the phenotypic ratio is only interested in how many are yellow, how many are blue. So three out of the four have at least one dominant allele, therefore they're yellow. Only one out of the four, or 25%, are going to be blue. Now let's move on. And as we move along, there is another um, problem in which you have to identify the gametes that are possible for certain individuals. And so I want to make sure these are this would be for a dye hybrid cross or something with two traits. So let's make sure that we can do that. So the first individual is big Y, big Y, big S, little s. So Y still stands for yellow. Big S and little s stand for either smooth or wrinkled, with smooth being dominant to wrinkled. So to generate gametes, what does that mean? Okay, what that means is that would be the sperm or the egg, right, that are produced by this individual. And we have to half 
or cut in half the genetic material in order to produce a gamete. So we're going to have half as many letters or half as much genetic material in our gametes. Well, how do we figure out what would we get with a two-trait cross? You can use a method called foiling, where F stands for first. You take the first two letters, or the first two alleles. Outer, you take the outer two letters, or the outer two alleles. And then inner, you take the inner two alleles, and then last. So in other words, the first with the first, so that makes Y, S. The outer would be the outer here and the outer here, so big Y, little s. Then the inner, this would be big Y, big S, those are the inner two. And then the last two for each trait, so big Y, little s. So that's how you would determine the gametes for a two-trait cross, okay? Um, let's, let's move along and do a couple more problems. The f one other problem that I want to work for you is this one. It says, in peas, green pods are dominant over yellow pods. So now we're going to talk about pods. So G stands for green pods, whereas little g stands for yellow pods. So green's dominant over yellow. Our problem is, if a homozygous dominant plant is crossed with a homozygous recessive plant, what will be the phenotype of the F1 generation? So homozygous dominant has two of the dominant alleles, Homozygous recessive has two of the recessive alleles, and we would like to know what the phenotype is of the F1 generation, okay? Well, you can probably determine that without even doing a Punnett square because you see the only alleles this parent has to offer is big G. The only alleles for gametes this parent has to offer is little g. But we can still do that Punnett square. We have big G, big G for one parent, little g, little g, so 100% of the F1 generation are big G, little g, so what color are they? They phenotypically, they have, they all have green pods. Now the next question asks, well, what if you cross two of these from the F1 generation, what will the phenotype of the offspring be? So in this case, we're taking the F1 individual, so we're saying G, big G, little g, crossed with big G, little g. Let's set that up, one parent, okay? And the other parent has the same alleles. If we fill this in, then we end up with, for the genotypic ratio, we end up with one, of the homozygous dominants to two of the heterozygotes to one of the homozygous recessive. That's our genotypic ratio. Our phenotypic ratio is what they're asking us. Again, is three, all three of these have the green or the dominant phenotype to one that has the recessive phenotype. Okay, lastly, I want to go over a problem about bacterial shape. This is a two-trait cross, and it says in bacteria, oval is dominant to round-shaped cells, and thick-walled bacteria is dominant to thin-walled, thin-cell-walled bacterial cells. So. Our problem says we're going to cross a heterozygous, oval, thick cell-walled bacteria. So heterozygous means one of each. So big O, little o, big T, little t. We're going to cross that with a thin-walled, 
round bacteria. The only way to be round is to have two recessive copies, and the only way to be thin-walled is to have two recessive copies. So step one, we need to figure out the gametes of this parent. We're going to do that with the FOIL method. So the first gamete is big O, big T. The second gamete is big O, little t. The third gamete is little O, big T. And the final gamete is little O, little t. On the other parent, okay, I want to point something out to you. Normally, when you have two traits, you're going to have a 16 square Punnett square, right? Because each parent can produce four gametes. And when you use all four times four, you're going to get 16 possible offspring. But with this parent, no matter when we do our foiling method, every way we do it, we're always just going to get little o, little t, because that's the only allele that parent has to offer. So we can put little o, little t for the gamete, and we don't have to worry about the rest of the Punnett square. We don't have to repeat that all four times, because it's just going to be the same ratio repeated four times. So we'll fill in. our Punnett square, okay, and what we find is our, our genotypic ratio, okay, we, we have four different, four completely genotypically different offspring, right? We have one, two, one, two, one, to one. Now our phenotypic ratio is where we are going to combine them based on traits. So this first and this first set bacterial cell is going to be it's, it's heterozygous, so it has at least one of each of the dominant traits. So therefore, it's oval and thick. This one has one of the dominant for the shape, so it's oval but it's thin. This one is round because both of the alleles are recessive and thick. And this one is round and thin. So we have four, all four represented with one individual each. So we have one oval, thick, one oval, thin, one, whoops, excuse me, round, thick, and one round, thin. Now, the second part might have been a little confusing to you when it asks what is the F2 generation's phenotype. Well, you would have to decide. All the other questions that they asked you to give F2, all of the F1 generation had the same genotype. So you would have to choose one or two of these, one type, use it twice, or two different types to cross those in order to figure out what your F2 generation would be.